Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may remember how Jesus taught his disciples that they should always pray and not give up. He taught them to be persistent. And he told them about a story about a, a woman who uh, kept going back to the judge looking for justice. And finally, she got the justice that she was looking for. And he used her as an example for his disciples to be persistent. Jesus wants his followers to be persistent. That is a quality that we see in our Old Testament reading for today in the prophet Jeremiah. He's got the kind of persistence that Jesus wants all of his followers to have. Jeremiah is unafraid in the face of danger, and he's confident of the outcome that God's will will prevail. In our Old Testament reading for today, uh, Jeremiah is being threatened with hostility and danger. He is in environment. He is in an environment where the people are largely thankless and they don't appreciate anything that he's doing or saying. Jeremiah is being rejected by the religious and political leaders of the nation. And Jeremiah is surrounded by people, some of whom will likely be lost for eternity. A difficult situation that Jeremiah finds himself in, but God gave him the strength to persist. And that quality that Jesus encourages in us, you see in Jeremiah as he persists in speaking the truth in love. And he says at the end of our, uh, at the end of our Old Testament reading for today, Jeremiah says to those who are rejecting him, In truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Jeremiah persisted in the things that God wanted him to do. You see the same kind of thing in the Apostle Paul, uh, our epistle reading today from the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul. He has, uh, he's demonstrating that same kind of quality. Paul, throughout his missionary journeys, uh, he, he uh, was sometimes threatened with hostility and danger. He sometimes met up with that uh, that reaction of thanklessness among uh, the people he was sent to, sometimes rejected by them. Uh, Paul uh, worked sometimes with people who, in the end, likely will be lost for eternity. And Paul uh, indicates those kinds of things in the book of Philippians when he writes that, that some people walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. But Paul demonstrated that quality of persistence that Jesus uh, encourages all of his followers to have. And he says in our epistle reading, he encourages the Philippian congregation to stand firm in the Lord. Keep on trusting in God and his promises. Be persistent is what Paul encourages them to do. And then I want to say a couple of things about uh, St. Patrick because it is St. Patrick's Day. And it is okay uh, to talk about, for Lutherans to talk about St. Patrick. He is mentioned in our hymnal, you know, on the list of commemorations in here. And March 17th today is uh, St. Patrick's Day, the commemoration of St. Patrick, and our hymnal calls him a missionary to Ireland. St. Patrick he too demonstrated that quality of persistence, even in the face of danger. The best way to learn about the real St. Patrick, I think, because there there's a lot of things said about him that maybe aren't true, like you know, he, he chased all the snakes out of Ireland. The best way to, one of the best ways to learn about the real St. Patrick, you know, we have two letters that he wrote that uh, we still have access to. And you read those two letters that he wrote, and that's the real St. Patrick, I think. And one of the things that comes across in those letters is the persistence that Jesus encourages all of his church to have. He wrote about some of the dangers that he and other Christians faced in Ireland, that sometimes they were put to death. Sometimes they were taken captive and sold into slavery. Uh, St. Patrick, he sometimes was threatened with hostility and danger, sometimes surrounded by thanklessness. 
uh, sometimes rejected by people and working with people, some of whom likely would be lost for eternity. But God gave him the strength to persist. God gave him the strength to carry on. And you see those qualities in uh, St. Patrick in his letters, that he's unafraid of the dangers and confident of the outcome that God would prevail. And this is one of the things that he writes uh, in his letters. So a quote from St. Patrick. He writes, How wonderful it is that here in Ireland, a people who never had any knowledge of God have recently become a people of the Lord and are now called children of God. Persistence was a quality that you can find in him as well. And of course, that's a quality that God encourages in us today. That quality of persistence in faith and life, persistence in believing the truth of God's word and living out the, the, the kind of life that God uh, teaches us to live. God wants us today to persist and to be unafraid of the dangers around us and confident in the outcome that God in the end will prevail. Some of the ways that the Bible encourages us to be persistent uh, in Philippians chapter 4, a little bit later on uh, from our epistle reading, uh, that's where Paul says to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, teaching us to be persistent in the joy that we have as Christians and the hope that we have for eternity in heaven. In 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, maybe you're familiar with these words, Peter writes, Always be ready to give a defense, to give a reason for the hope that you have in Christ. And do this with gentleness and respect. You'll be persistent in uh, taking advantage of opportunities to share our faith. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, there the apostle writes, Be steadfast, you know, faithful, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And these are just a few of the ways that the Bible encourages us to persist. To persist in faith and life. Continue to believe the things that Jesus has taught us to believe. Continue to live out the life that Jesus has given us to live out. But you know the struggles that we face, and I'm sure other generations before us have faced. Uh, at times we grow tired and weary. Sometimes uh, we are overcome by uh, by worries, the worries of this life. We can become discouraged, depressed, and afraid. And also, uh, at times, we wrestle with our sinful nature, which wants us to care only about ourselves and to give up on God and give up on other people, give up on faith and give up on hope. We struggle sometimes with those kinds of things in this world. But our, our hope for eternity and the good news for us today and every day is especially the persistence of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus was persistent in his journey to Jerusalem to offer up his life there for the sins of the world, including our sins. He was persistent and he was unafraid of the dangers that he would face there, and he was confident in the outcome that on the third day God would raise him from the dead. Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, he was threatened with hostility and danger. We see that uh, today, where he's told, Herod wants to kill you, leave this place. But that doesn't scare him away. Jesus confronted uh, thanklessness and the idea that he would be rejected and that some people that he worked with would be lost for eternity. But he didn't let that stop him. And you see that in his lament for Jerusalem and how he is saddened by the thought that Jerusalem just continues to uh, kill the prophets, stone those sent to her, reject God and his word, and how God, he would love to gather them together like a, like a, like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but the city was un uh, uh, unwilling. But nonetheless, Jesus continued. He persisted, and for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he went there to pay for the sins of the world and the sins of us here. And because of him, we are forgiven for all those times that we grow weary or selfish or afraid or despairing. All those things are covered by the blood of Christ on the cross. 
And then, of course, on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead, never to face death again. And he rules as King of kings and Lord of lords. And he blesses us today with uh, word and sacraments. He gives us things like baptism, the gift of the Lord's Supper, the promise of absolution, the cleansing of our sins, the proclamation of, our, of the gospel. And through these things, Jesus continues to give the strength to his church to persist all the way to the end, to our heavenly home. Through these things, Jesus gives strength to his church and forgiveness to, him, uh, to his church so that we may endure to the end, all the way to our heavenly home. And that is your future because of God's love for you and his care for you, eternal life in heaven. That is your future because of God's love and his care for you and because of the persistence of Jesus Christ in the care that he has for his church. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.